Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni is the key. He's the key to win hearts and minds. You're by a dude, King Dingbat here. So today we have come with the. <laughs> It's a big ass dog. Dallas still stinks. Everybody do it, King Ding back here, and I hope everybody's having a great day, great week. It is nice to see you all again. Your favorite lumberjack is here because that's what I look like with this stupid beard. I gotta shave it, man. I gotta shave it. But um, before I start this video, I gotta say, uh, I just wanna say. Thank you to each and every one of you guys uh, who has wished me and my family well wishes um, on the loss of my grandmother. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's never easy when you lose a loved one, you know. And, and my grandmother was an amazing woman. She lived 99 years. Uh, I hope I can live close to that. That would be amazing. Um, she led a great life. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things where I just... I just didn't feel like going on a camera, you know, I just didn't feel like talking or be on a camera because, um, you know, I, I was in mourning, I guess. I guess that's what you would say. Um, so need just a few days uh, to kind of regroup and, and the outpouring was amazing. And me and my family, we appreciate it immensely. Uh, I haven't even answered all uh, the well wishes yet. I'm going to get to that eventually, but I just want to thank each and every one of you guys because... Uh, it really, you know, it, it made me smile, brightened up my day, uh, and it just made me feel, and my family feel a little bit better. So thank you. Thank you very much to each and every one of you guys. Um, I, I do appreciate it. In the meantime, I was able to put out some stuff that I already had video recorded, like that draft, uh, the mock draft, and some of those reacts. So it, it just worked out uh, that way. But I appreciate it. Each and every one of you guys, shout out to you. Now, let's get back to Eagles football. Let's get back to business because uh, over the last few days, I'm sure everybody saw the article on on the dysfunction within this front office, right? We saw the, the whole thing by The Athletic on, on Jeffrey Lurie, Howie Roseman, uh, kind of how they treated Doug Peterson. And uh, it's disturbing. It is a disturbing article if it is all true. And as far as like what we've been saying, especially on this channel, uh, we've been dead on with Howie Roseman. I think we're dead on with Howie Roseman, what he wants, what he's doing. Um, the surprise really is the Jeffrey Lurie thing. Like, you know, you, I knew he, he, he was, you know, an owner who was involved, but it sounds like it's a lot worse than we thought, okay? It's a lot worse. And one of the things that I really got fearful of when reading this, and I really didn't get um, until I read this article, was the amount of, of, of emphasis that Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie put on analytics, okay? It sounds like they put a super a lot on it. Uh, you know, Howie's right-hand man is an analytics guy. And um, you get these analytics guys and these scouts, right? These old school scouts, and they kind of clash. They don't agree with each other a lot. And it sounds like the analytics guys really have the ear of Jeffrey Lurie, of Howie Roseman, and I think that is a big mistake. Uh, I have no issue with using analytics, but uh, when you see teams, and remember the Phillies did this a few years ago, when you use analytics, um, like as your main thing, as everything, for everything, I think it's a problem. Uh, analytics should be used in combination with other things, but you can never, you can never take away a, a scout, a person who's been in the game, uh, their, their judgment, their eye for talent. Uh, you can't take those things away. And, and if you use analytics too much, you come up with draft picks like uh, J.J. Ortega Whiteside, the umbrella man over D.K. Metcalf. Okay, um, so that to me is what really scares me because uh, if you if you base everything on analytics, I think it's a mistake, and I hope I hope that the Eagles are going to get away from that and trust your scouting department, trust the guys. I mean, we've heard reports Howie Roseman he overruled them on the Justin Jefferson pick. Uh, they he overruled them on uh, the, the the second round pick when they won Jeremy Chin. Um, so hopefully. 
they they have a, a better plan in place. I, I, you know, the thing is this. You can't fire the owner. You can't get rid of the owner. The owner is the owner. And whatever he's going to do, we're stuck by it. You know, we're stuck by it. He can he can fire Howie Roseman. He can change Howie Roseman's position. But if he believes so strongly in analytics, it's not going to happen. And it makes perfect sense on why he was so, so, um, so, you know, dismissive of, you know, any questions about Howie Roseman in the draft. I mean, he had one of the weirdest, weirdest answers I've ever heard. And that was when he said, uh, well, Howie, he, he has guys he wants to pick, but they get taken. And it's like, what? They get taken? They get, what kind of Michael Anthony, where's the fitness, Mark Holmes, Sand in the Wood kind of answers that? Really? I mean, so your player that you wanted gets taken. You don't have a second next in line. You don't have a third next. I don't think the Eagles use the draft board like we talk about. Like, you know, you should have all your scouts, all your guys... And over the course of the month, even during the year, you should have everything being analyzed and you should have a draft board and it should have the rankings of all the players. And especially in the first round, as players come off the board, you take their names off. And then when you're picking whoever that highest guy is, that's who you draft. It should be that simple, but it doesn't sound like it is. Um, I, I am scared of over analytics. Uh, definitely no question about it. And then they hear the things about... Jeffrey Lurie and Howie with with Doug Peterson every day or every Tuesday having meetings of question, why did you do this? Why did you do this? Why did you go for it on fourth down? I mean, that's, that is tough, man. That you That is craziness in my opinion, you know. Um, now, a lot of people will tell you that Nick Sirianni was was hired because he's going to be a yes man. He is going to be a yes man to, to uh, Jeffrey and to Howie Roseman. And, and I think that there is some truth to that. Let's be honest. I think there is some truth to that because I think Doug was the same type of hire. Uh, I don't think after Chip Kelly, Howie Roseman ever is going to try to put himself in a position where he's giving up control or power. He is not going to do it. And if you get a strong-willed um, type coach, uh, you, he's going to have problems again, especially with the draft. So they might have hired Nick Sirianni uh, because he was a young coach eager to just get an opportunity, get his foot in the door, and he's willing to put up with some stuff. Um, but I do think this. I think Nicky, Nick Sirianni is going to bring an aspect to the Eagles, an aspect to the front office that nobody expected. I think this guy, from hearing him talk, his energy, his excitement, he is so contagious with with things, man. I just want to put a football helmet on and run through the window, run through a door. I mean, you know, that's how he makes me feel. I can't imagine, and I really believe this is going to happen. I think he's going to have a bigger influence on Jeffrey Lurie, and Howie Roseman than anybody is thinking. And when you get that combination with the fact that this article just came out and this article just basically spilled the beans, you're going to get a Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman who are going to try to not have that article be completely correct and try to do things a little differently. Meaning, I think they're going to have Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie on their best behavior. I think it's going to put them on their best behavior because they're going to have to feel they're going to feel the need to prove this stuff wrong and that you know things do run smooth and they got a plan and you know the organization is running fine. So I think with the combination of Nick Sirianni, the combination of that, I think they are going to draft completely different than we've seen in the past. And this is a good thing. This means that they are going to have a board and they are going to go best guy available. And in my opinion, hopefully it's Devontae Smith when they pick. Maybe it's Jalen Waddle. I'll take him. Maybe it's Michael Parsons. I'll take him. Maybe it's Patrick Sertan. I'll take him. Maybe it's J.C. Horn. I'll take him. What I don't want is Quiddy Pay. Gregory Rousseau. You know, some dude from uh, Kraft Cheese University. That's what I don't want. I don't want Mark Holmes football camp. Dak Anthony, Dak, where's the fitness? Anthony, whatever. I don't want nap time, uh, nap time camp. I don't want it. 
Dak, I forgot his name. Dak Anthony, where's the fitness? You know, you know, Kapizzle's uh, whistleblowing therapy. We don't need guys from those places. We need real guys. Guys from Alabama. Guys from Georgia. Guys from Florida. Guys from real schools. That double moonwalk ass. That's what we need. Um, if, if we look at this front office and what this article is saying, it's very dysfunctional. However, like I said, because of the article, because Harry Roseman's going to feel need to have to prove it wrong, because you know somewhere he has this complex. You know somewhere he remembers being in the boiler room. You know somewhere he's thinking, I don't ever want to go through that again. I think that will open a door for then Nick Sirianni to come in, pump those guys up, excite them about certain players, influence them, and draft the right guy. So despite all this crap, I still have hope and faith that the Eagles are going to have a really, really good draft this year. Just my personal opinion. We'll see what the hell happens. Now, um, this is a crazy week for me. A lot of things going on. A lot of moving parts still going on. Um, uh, I will I will be doing as many videos as I can when I can. You may see you may see me come in with quicker live streams, that kind of thing, popping in from here, popping in from there, um, because that's just uh, the nature. There's a lot of things going on, having to move, and 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 all the stuff with my grandmother. So um, I will keep you guys informed. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat.